Hi, and welcome to Bridges to Community. I am co-host Sarah Turcott, and I'm the Area Community Liaison for Bridges by Epic, and I'm happy to be here with you today. Unfortunately, my co-host, Erica Lab is not able to be with us today, but she looks forward to joining us again next time. While we will miss having Erica, I am so honored to welcome and in introduce to you a very special guest, Sharon Grimm. Sharon Grimm provides solutions for her clients to build, strengthen, and develop relationships that create wealth through acts of expressions and kindness. She is a graduate of Bentley University, and amongst many talents and hobbies, Sharon works with a, fa a fabulous program called Send Out Cards, which we will learn more about shortly. I would say in my time of getting to know Sharon, I have been most moved by another role that she embraces, one that is near and dear to my heart. She is a caregiver for her mom and not just any caregiver. She's an extraordinary caregiver and advocate for her mom. In my years of working in senior care, I have worked with many caregivers and I shared with Sharon she should create a Caregiver 101 course. Uh, she is here today to share her caregiver story and the power of connection. And I welcome you, Sharon. It's just a true pleasure to have you here today. Um, and I'm just so excited for other caregivers and, and families who are tuning into Bridges to Community to hear about your story and how you have embraced this role and really have brought so much quality to life for your both your mom and the staff that work with your mom. So I'm really excited to have you here today. Thank you so much for asking me to be here. Yeah. Um, been, we met walking out in nature. <laughs> I know. And got talking and you just, you know, had a connection and we're just sharing stories. And when I learned that you were in the elder care, you know, community, um, I just had to share my story about my mom. And, you know, I always say that, I mean, the universe never makes a mistake. And when things are meant to be, it was meant to be. And I was truly moved by your story. And it's just been so much fun getting to, you know, just hear, you know, your journey and you know I work with caregivers every day and I, I, I really wish like I, I've said to you before to come in t and you know maybe a support group and really share you know the your story because it, it, it is it's eye-opening when you can um, do what you do and you know uh, approach caregiving with a different lens if that makes sense um, yeah I mean the, my business being building relationship and connecting folks it was natural to embrace this chapter in my mother's life, which is like the final chapter, the hurrah, you mm. know, um, with that same philosophy of building relationships and building a team. And that team isn't just me as a caregiver. It's focused and centered around my mom. Sure. And how can we make this the best possible situation? Went into it pre all of everything that's going on now. <laughs> I know. Well, being a caregiver is not easy, and certainly being a caregiver in the last two years has yeah. been extremely difficult. And I just love your outside of the box approach of how you stay connected, you know, both with your mom and, the, and, and with the staff at the facility she resides in. And I'd love for you just to share your caregiver story. Absolutely. Um, it was. Shortly after my dad passed away, about six months after, um, of course, my parents were actually separated and my mother still mourned him. Mm. And we were seeing changes and stuff, not knowing quite what to do. And typical, there's a catastrophe, you know, and all of a sudden you see yourself in the ER room mm -hmm. or your loved one in the ER room. And then you're like, what do we do? What's really going on? Um, so first thing that I did was shifted her into a rehab unit locally in Littleton. Mm -hmm. And um, they got her sugar levels down because that was, you know, the first thing of order. And then we could see really what was going on. And it turned out that she does have dementia dementia mm -hmm. and Alzheimer's, something that my grandmother also had, but you know, they've made so many efforts and this facility has a lot of nature and it turned out to be the same facility that my mother and I would go and visit her friends at. Oh, okay. So it was a wonderful, beautiful, full circle, local experience. Sure. Um, 
It's funny how that works that way. I know. <laughs> it was great. It was like going back home. So I felt really comfortable. And when I explained to her where she was and she remembered those visits, mm. she literally, and I felt, you know, you're so torn. Like, what is the right thing to do for your parent? Is mm. it me taking care of them or is it finding the right match or facility? And Absolutely. I actually consulted a geriatric placement specialist throughout this whole process. Sure. And she guided me and my mom through the first like two months, I would say. Sure. And it was the best investment I ever made. Sure. Well, and caregiving doesn't come with a handbook. Yeah, exactly. I was not trained. I was not ready for this. So I highly recommend people seek out the support of professionals. Sure. And help you through the process. Sure. Um, well, it's overwhelming. There's a lot of grief yeah. and guilt that come, you know, with this process. And when you're working with a professional, they can really, you know, take that kind of unemotional, um, you know, viewpoint to help support you, but also educate you. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you learned about so many resources oh you gosh. weren't even aware of. Yeah, and talk to your friends, talk to those in your network, because, I mean, people come out and they give you resources and tools and they talk to you and I went through this and it's really amazing mm. and then share what you've learned with others absolutely um, so we went into it it turned out some of the staff members were like related to my extended family so it was like <laughs> oh and like people across the way because when you're, you're like your hometown all of a sudden you realize like oh my gosh this is so and so's <laughs> mom so like we were always kind of like bumping into friends and family and hallways so, you know, taking part in those moments and then embracing those new people that all of a sudden are part of your life and part of your family. Yeah. Consider the whole team as part of your family and get to know them. And my mother was great at that. I would go in to visit her. Oh, so-and-so's, you know, she's got three kids and they're beautiful. <laughs> you know, because the staff will like share and talk and connect with your loved one sure. and those relationships. So, you know, through time she transmits transferred into the memory care unit, sure. which was a huge blessing. And, um, you know, I learned all the ropes with that. And I had a really amazing um, tip from a friend who had been through this chapter with her husband and, and his dad and mom to kind of take a pause back and let the staff in the facility do their job. Sure. Um, but still be that advocate, like be a team player. She's like, tell yourself you're only gonna go so many times a week. Mm -hmm. So for me, two times a week seemed comfortable. Sure. Um, so I have kept that vow two times a week. Sometimes I may not be around, like if I'm away on a vacation, I, I, I may arrange for a friend to go visit sure. her, or I call in, or we do like a FaceTime with the staff or something. So um, That's been a blessing the last yeah, few years so is all those video chats. <laughs> Huge. <laughs> oh my gosh, how many people know Zoom now? <laughs> <laughs> and it's nice but, that the staff are, are able to help with that too. And yeah. Can you just tell or share a a little bit about ways that you've embraced, you know, welcoming and working with that care team there? Yeah, um, some ways is just lifting them up. Um, and it could be you see that, you know, on the Facebook page of the facility that so and so just got an award for like, you know, best employee of the month. Mm -hmm. Or, um, they did something, or you see something amazing. Like, I had one employee that just went over and above what I would expect in just helping me connect with my mother. Sure. Um, you know, made sure that, you know, she got brought down to the window if we were doing a window visit, right? Sure. And was set up with everything and then went back to what they were doing. So just little stuff like that. So if there are some staff members that are really, you're like, whoa, this person's amazing. Because of my business, I can do greeting cards custom. So sure. I would make up a card saying, you know, thank you, Dan, say, I'll just make up a name. Sure. Um, for being amazing, I really appreciate how much you took an effort today to make my visit really enjoyable for my mom. Mm. I appreciate you, and I attached a small gift to it. Didn't send it directly to the employee, I sent it to their supervisor so that the supervisor would get it and I put a note, please deliver. And they know what amazing staff member they have. Sure. And it gives that recognition and it helps the facility like 
really thank their staff at the same time without having to spend money or anything. You did it for them. Absolutely. You know, and I tell you that comes back in spades, not just for me personally. The staff member has a ripple effect of them. They go home, they feel appreciated to their loved ones, and it continues and goes on. Absolutely, because they genuinely have heard from the source that they've made a difference mm -hmm. in someone's life. And most especially the last couple of years, as you know, in you know, settings like these, it's been, you know, very difficult to stay connected, right? Right. And I'll tell you, some of the things I've seen families send along, even over to Bridges during the, you know, pandemic, it's a little thought. You know, I think about a little, you know, jar of candies with mm -hmm. just a note saying, thank you for all that you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that there was a lot of judgment, especially when this pandemic first, you know, started when it comes to these types of facilities and oh. to remember that there are true real life heroes, healthcare heroes Absolutely. coming in each and every day and to take a moment to say it, it, it goes a long way and it's amazing. Yeah, when it first happened, I mean, it was really rough for everybody. It was a shock. You know, sure. what, what are we going to do? What, what, you, I'm not allowed in the building. Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? You yeah. know, and, and they just, they had to lock them down. And then, you know, there was some, and unfortunately my mother's facility got hit hard and they hit the news yeah. and it wasn't a good news. They were not getting any support. They were getting a lot of finger pointing yeah. and it wasn't helping the morale, the staff, Nope. And it, it was really bad and sad. So I said to myself, what can I do? What can I do? Well, they need to be appreciated. They need to know that they're loved and the people in the residents need to know that they're loved mm -hmm. because I'm local. What about the daughter or the son or the, that mother is like across the country and they're like, what am I gonna do, yeah. you know? I can't even fly out and visit or whatever, you know? So. I thought to myself, better than the cards, there are these signs that a friend of mine does, kindness signs, and it says you are loved. And in the facility is a main road that not just the workers uh, come in, but the ambulance drivers, the EMTs, the um, food delivery yeah. trucks, you know, everybody has to come in this one. The village that's entrance. making it happen. Right, <laughs> all these essential employees. and. I lined, my husband and I bought 20 something signs, lined the driveway and went around the building so the, the residents and staff could see, you're appreciated, you're loved. Um, you know, just positive things. So when they came out, they were like, whoa, oh my gosh. When they came in, whoa, even the fire department. The ripple effect was amazing. Yeah. And it was just like you felt so good. And there's still one sign in front of my mom's window to this day. <laughs> <laughs> well, and as they deserve to, and I just, I think that's a, a, you know, just such a powerful thing, you know, one small little gesture yeah, and the, like you said, the ripple, the ripple effect it creates because when you're creating that ripple effect, it, you know, it, it happens with the staff with, which then trickles down to the residents that reside there. I think that's amazing. And um, one story I just thought was fun, that would be fun to share is I know that, I mean, you do thing, all things creative, but you really got creative when it came to celebrating your mom's 80th birthday oh, yeah. <laughs> during the pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that's not always easy to do, right? Yeah. How do you get together when you're not celebrating, especially a big milestone like that? So yeah. I'd love for you to share a little bit about yeah. that. One of, um, I actually asked, asked um, Lauren, the director of her unit at yep. that time, like, give me some ideas. What have people done? You know, I'm not rec <laughs> recreating the wheel here. And then I asked other you know, daughters of moms that have had, you know, moms with milestone birthdays, what did you do? And I got some ideas and we kind of put it all together. And it was 80 notes of like love uh. in this jar. And, you know, I made up the first 20 pretty easy, right? And then it's like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of notes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh. And I'm like, so then I was like, let me start reaching out to people. Like my old babysitter that used to babysit me. I'm like, give me a couple things, you know? Her nieces and nephews and granddaughters, my brother, Aww. my uncles, and they all like wrote a note and I said who it was from. And some of them told some stories that I didn't know. <laughs> so I put them all in the jar and 
you know, delivered it with flowers on her special day. And then what else do we do? We did balloons. I had 24 cupcakes from a local bakery uh, for every, so that everybody in the unit, she's in her own like wing, yep, you know, memory yep. care, would have a cupcake. And then we also got her some fun 80th, like <laughs> snazzy glasses and the queen, you know, tiara and a nice outfit. And we got her hair done that week and, you know, so whatever we could do to make it special, sure. it happened. Um, so what was really neat is I heard from one of the eights, one of the staff members, um, you know, I sat and we'd read just like a couple notes a day because you know, it is a lot, right? Sure. <laughs> and so she's like, your mother like lit up. She remembered, you know, and it was just so neat. I was going to say that, especially for maybe families that were sharing stories of the past, a lot of times folks who live with memory loss have pretty good preserved long-term exactly. memories. So to be able to, you know, go down memory lane and have a laugh and, and even if there wasn't a, a, you know, a memory of the event that happened, just to hear it and to feel that love and that someone is thinking of you, I, I think yeah. that is just, that's an amazing gift idea. I might have to steal that yeah. one. <laughs> and then the other thing we did because I'm part of a card sending community because that is greeting cards and gifts is what I do with send out cards. Um, I posted like a month before, like I went and went through family albums and went through her yearbook even oh, from wow. Westford Academy. <laughs> <laughs> well, plug there. <laughs> I don't know what class. <laughs> 81, you do the math. <laughs> um, but went through that and I created some cards, you know, and sent them to her. And one of the staff members like collect them all and they they opened them up so it wasn't too overwhelming and they made this whole board. Oh, wow. And friends made up cards and like there was a German shepherd dog and <laughs> I had no clue. It was from like an apartment way before I was born. And uh, yeah, and it was like the story she told, I think they were true. I don't know. <laughs> hey, if fun. they were having fun sharing them, right? Why not? <laughs> yeah. And it was like, oh my gosh, my mother was so active and vibrant and, you know, part of these clubs and stuff and That's basketball. Awesome. It was just kind of cool. That's awesome. And I do have to say, I have checked out Send It Out Cards or mm -hmm. Send Out Cards, excuse me. Mm -hmm. And it's a fabulous program. And I have actually been the gift recipient of Sharon's cards and, and gifts. And it's a really simplified way of keeping connected in a personalized way. And I'd love for you to share, because I know you utilize this program to share your appreciation with some of the staff members yes. there. So what are some ways you've utilized it besides kind of like the card making piece of it. Right, um, so with staff and sending cards, and actually there's one going out right now for somebody, <laughs> it should arrive in a few days. Um, uh, one staff member, he's been leading the activities department of the memory care ward, and he just got promoted. Oh, the when, heartbeat of the building or the yes, program, right? he just got promoted to doing the activities for the whole building. Wow. So super excited for him. Good and for it's him. just seen him grow, because when you've been in a facility, like your parent, you see like people grow and come and go and stuff like that. But some people just grow. And Quinn is his name and he's grown and he's just amazing. That's awesome. And, um, he plays guitar for the residents and stuff and he's just a really fun guy and he's one of the staff members that goes above and beyond for my mom. So I just sent to his new, they have a new director there. Um, a little gift of appreciation with some photos of him. Mm -hmm. um, he was on their blog for Life Care in Neshoba Valley. And I just took and clipped photos of that and put that in a card as a, just as a memory for him. Mm. And put the whole pieces of the blog, the text in the card mm. as a keepsake for him. That's so and nice. And thanked him, but I sent it again to his supervisor <laughs> so that she could give it to him. That's awesome. Um, as just another little, crumb like added yeah. nice little feature um because you know let's face it it's a very hard job and they are angels and i could not do it without them sure you know you need us you need a team absolutely and uh you know i really you know i stand behind everything that they do and 
it's you're all working together and it's never perfect no. life is not perfect so you have to have grace and far from you know, uh, perfection place in healthcare the last few no. years it's been <laughs> challenging at best um, yeah but it's it's heading in the right direction and thank goodness for people I mean I think about our frontline staff and all the team members I work with and I would be we would all be lost right. without each other, and everyone brings a, a piece of the pie to the equation, Absolutely. and it truly does take a village, and I, I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I know I, I have a few. I want to make sure I ask all my questions here during our time. <laughs> but, you know, one thing, you know, I think you've you shared great ways of how you stay connected with your mom and with the yeah. staff there. And, you know, I think that as a caregiver, most especially an adult child caregiver, you know, you have that you, maybe that um, relationship, maybe the obligation, whatever it might be. But. Mm -hmm. How do you keep your family and friends involved with your mom? I know for some folks oh, yeah. it's not easy. You know, sometimes it's not easy when someone has an illness like dementia because it can make communicating for some, you know, difficult. Right. And not everyone, um, you know, feels that that comfort level or the capability. So what are ways you've kept your friends and family connected with your mom? When I post about my mom on Facebook, she gets more <laughs> views than everybody I ever know. <laughs> Let me tell you, I post the good stuff, people, when they're humorous. And I usually record it in video and not do a Facebook Live. Don't recommend that. The raw is not recommended. Um, you know, she'll say something witty and funny that I know her grandchild would really enjoy or her brother that's down in Florida or up in Maine, wherever he is, um, you know, and send it off to them. And sometimes I just post that, you know, another wonderful bistro window visit <laughs> with, um, we call her Ellen. Um, <laughs> date night with Ellen was a hashtag for a long time. <laughs> You know, we take her, pre-COVID, pre take her out to date night, and we'd have snippets of, you know, dining. You know, she's having her, you know, gin diet ginger ale, and we're having <laughs> martinis and glasses of wine. And, um, you know, she's in her walker, and it's just like, what an awesome time we have had. And so seeing the journey with me, and I just try to, when I post, I try to inspire those that this isn't such a bad chapter. Mm. You can really make lemonade out of lemons. Sure. Um, and have fun with it. You know, I posted pictures of staff members walking outside as we're going off to date night with her. Um, and now it's like, you know, in the summertime, it's great. She's got like a, a um, they got a putting green right outside <laughs> her window. She's got one of the best spots. I know um, you love golf. So uh, I love golf. I've turned, that was one of my go-to things, shifted gears, get into golf. A lot of people have, right? So I, I actually go to my mom's to practice putting and she watches me from the window and rolls her eyes. <laughs> and my husband will sit at, you know, we'll take turns chatting with her and, and he took up golf, but you know, it's all about the putting. So I'll post stuff like that. And and uh, my mother gets a chuckle out of it, and I talk about golf, and that's something that, you know, she knows that our family was really into, and that sure. brings up other conversations. It's just like having that speaking point. Yeah. Um, so that's one way. And then it's interesting because people will start following and commenting, or, oh, that's so funny, or, you know, and I'll, I'll have her wave. I'm like, Mom, you have a following. Just smile and wave. And she's <laughs> like, okay. And then people are like, hi, Ellen. And then when the holidays come around, I'll say, anyone liked, I'm sure my mother would love to get a Christmas card from you. And then yeah. she'll get like 25 Christmas cards. I love that. You know, and then I sit in the holidays, and it was so much fun this last year because I've been sitting with her for now four years, sending out her Christmas cards. Sure. And which is something that she loved to do. And I just sit there on my phone using the app. And I'm like, so who else should we send one to? Um, you know, your brother Jerry, um, Uncle Leon, and Aunt Pam. <laughs> and then she's like, oh, yes. And I'm like, what would you like me to say? And then she'll tell me what to say. And I, I send him one by one. And we sat there one day and sent about 15 cards in an mm. hour. And um, right by a beautiful Christmas tree. And it was really nice. Yeah. It was really nice to be able to do that. 
and I explained her, you know, how I said, Mom, they're just gonna, she goes, so how do these go out? Because you're just on your phone. Like she was trying to understand, you know? And I'm like, oh, it's an app. And you know the cards that you get, and here's a sample, like this would be like a Valentine's Day card, you know? The cards that you get, they print them at the printer and then they mail them, you know, to your brother, and this one's going to Florida. And then that one was fun. Oh my gosh, we had fun. I said, Ma, Ma, how about we send him some snow? And she's like, how are you gonna do that? I'm like, it goes in the card, it's a gift, look. And she's like, oh. So we threw a snowball at her brother and I That's put so some snarky funny. comment in there. Um, so, you know, we, we have fun with it. And, um, you know, sometimes she understands, sometimes she doesn't. There sure. are visits when I go and she's sleeping. You yeah. know, it's just, you know, I may post um, a picture of me holding my mom's hand. Sure. And sometimes it's just being there sure. with them in the quiet and just holding their hand and that's okay. Yeah. You know, and sometimes you visit and they're just flat out taking a nap and they're just like, it's not worth it. Yeah. You know, so. Well, and I and I appreciate that because it's being present, right? Mm -hmm. And being able to expect the unexpected and bend with the wind and not have, you know, expectations, right? And the other thing I love is when you speak about, um, whole, you know, having a conversation with your mom, it's not focusing on the, well, did you remember this? Or, you know, tell mm -hmm. me about <laughs> what you did yesterday. Yeah. It's more of, you know, we were talking and reminiscing about the holidays right. and trying to, you know, have open-ended questions and having her share her thoughts and feelings rather than the recall. And I think that's super important for any caregiver who's caring for someone with memory loss. Absolutely. Um, and you know, before we run out of time, you know, I, <laughs> real, <laughs> I, I really would love for you to have an opportunity, you know, to just, you know, what would your one wish be if, you know, to all the caregivers who are, you know, tuning in, what, what do you wish to share with them? One, maybe a, one or two takeaways for them. Oh, um, should have brought my notes for that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say, really try to find an activity to do with them that will bring you joy and them joy. And ask yourself or, or challenge yourself to ask the facility, if they're in a facility, I'm, that's kind of like my situation. How can I help? Mm -hmm. Is there a way I can help? And it may not have anything to do with money. Yeah. You know, it could just be they're looking for people to work there. <laughs> Who isn't, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what if I shared on Facebook or LinkedIn? Or what if I um, reached out to a friend to see maybe their daughter's looking for work sure. or their son could work in a kitchen or something like that and just share that with them? Um, or it could just be, you know, we could use the bird feeders to be filled. Yeah. You know, and just think of ways to really engage and be part of the team mm -hmm. and pat yourself on the back. This is not easy. Nobody wrote, oh, well, there is a book. <laughs> yeah, there's a great there book. There is one book <laughs> um, that I came across called Working Daughter, A Guide for Caring for Your Aging Parents While Making a Living. Liz O'Donnell, she's local and she wrote this, amazing. And it's a current book. It recently yeah. came out and it is getting great reviews online because you tipped me off. So of course I had to go <laughs> diving in um, and, and I do appreciate it. And there are lots of resources yeah. out there. Um, certainly if you're a caregiver and you could benefit from education or caregiver support groups. Mm -hmm. I know Bridges offers them locally. We have some great programs at the local council on aging. Um, Sharon is on LinkedIn and yeah. she is super active and involved. I know <laughs> <laughs> that you could reach out to her on yeah. that platform. She would be willing to share just any more of her experience and resources. And you can find out more about Send Out Cards. It's an amazing program. Um, it's You could use it no matter what facet you work at. Um, it's a great way to stay connected and be personalized with your customers, clients, families, anyone and everyone. So. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. This has been a true pleasure just having you here and sharing your story. I really appreciate it. Yes, and I will have to say that first card is paid for by me. <laughs> so if you reach out, I will send you a link and just send your loved one a card or send somebody that has been supporting you through your journey with your loved one a card, a heartfelt thank you card, or maybe a Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Sharon, and thank you for joining Bridges to Community. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye. <laughs>